doesn't give everyone in the county a voice, an equal voice. A group of bipartisan Sandag board members are now seeking to change these voting policies that they say disenfranchise nearly half of San Diego County residents. Here to provide more insight is Sandag board member and Del Mar Mayor Terry Gasterlin. Terry, thank you very much for coming in. I respect the fact that you're coming in. Thank you for that. Thank you for having me. All right. Uh, the last time I had a conversation on this topic was last week with Mayor Bailey from uh, Coronado. Right, right. He talked about how the law of the land is the way it sits right now. How is voting policies? Tell us about the weighted vote and how it works right now at Sandag as we sit. Yep. Well, we have 19 jurisdictions. We've got 18 cities plus the unincorporated county, which has many, many communities. And the so-called weighted vote gives the population percent to each of those jurisdictions, and that is how much vote they have. That means San Diego City has 42 percent, and together, San Diego, Chula Vista, and one more, have 50 percent. That's it. So basically, the four most populous areas can basically rule the roost yeah. and makes everybody else irrelevant. Yeah, that's exactly right. And in fact, it's the three, because San Diego has two votes, the way to split among two people, and this rather arcane formula, you have to have four people voting, three jurisdictions. So as it says right now, the mileage tax would, would go through. I mean, it, it, it's... It, well, okay, so the mileage tax is a vote of the people. So if the mileage tax went through, then all that money, that new revenue, would be under the control of just three cities. All right, now for you, in your world, if you could wave a magic wand, how would it work for you? If I could wave a magic wand, I would change an or back to an and. Please explain. Back in 2018, January 1st, the and became an or. It used to be that something could pass only if it passed by the tally vote, so the majority of the cities said yes, and passed by the weighted vote. That's how our House of Representatives and Senate work. All right, which is a... <laughs> I, I think it's important to note that you have a D next to your name. This is not, for, for the people on the left side of the aisle, you, you're kind of walking against the wheel because they like the fact that the most populous areas have the biggest voice, hence left-leaning areas like San Diego County and whatnot what, are, can rule, rule policy. What right. kind of blowback are you getting from your brethren who are saying, hey, Terry, Boy, you're walking against the wheel here. Well, that's exactly the blowback I'm getting. I'm saying, hey, you know, we need to build the relationships. We need to go along with those with the weighted vote power. Well, that hasn't been working. Del Mar is a terrific example. It's a tiny two square mile city. We have no buses from Del Mar that go east. We have no buses to our schools. No public bus goes to Torrey Pines High School. So, uh, in your view... It's not working. Okay. But <laughs> then let me t argue the other side of the yeah. coin here. There, but, hey, majority rules. Where's, you know, the biggest, the biggest area should have the biggest voice and have the biggest say. How do you respond to those folks? Right. And there are those who say, well, a weighted vote by population is, in fact, the fairest. But the problem is, that means that when it's split by jurisdictions like this, 43% of the county's people have no representative vote that counts. And that's the law of the land as it sits right now. Yeah. So how do you change that? Well, we change it by starting to talk about it, which is what we're doing now. And then we start to talk about the pros and the cons. And then we remind people that that and rather than the or was better. So legislatively, it would have to be changed at the legislative level. This was done by the state to our region. Right. Which, do they necessarily know what's best for us? No. No. We know what's best for us. As a matter of fact, I've been talking with the small city mayors, trying to get a sense of the coastal issues, to really understand where are the holes right now. A good example is an East County city, and I won't name the city, I'll just describe it. An East County city surrounded by highways, where every one of those interchanges makes it hard to get in and out of the city. So when it takes you an hour to go five miles, that just doesn't work. And if you have an entire city's worth of people who are impeded in getting to where they need, it, need to go on a daily basis, that's a problem. So how do you, 
would a simple SANDAG board member vote change this policy? No, but what we could do is agree to set aside the weighted vote. The weighted vote only happens when two members call for the weighted vote. So we have an agreement. We talk. We spend the next year, 2023, not using the weighted vote. And we look for collaboration and consensus. We listen to each other. And we get out those traffic engineering books and say, how do we make our intersections work better? All right, so for your brethren on the other side of the aisle, on the left side of the aisle, how are they how are they hearing that? I mean, are they are, are they agreeable? I mean, is this a, is there a consensus for this? We'll see. Yeah, because I'm I'm, I'm going to wager there isn't. Well, they, well, we everyone. If you if you if you go and you sit and have a cup of coffee and you talk about what are the problems, the weighted vote is a problem over and over and over again. I'm coming out and saying it. And yes, I've got a D Democrat next to my name. But that doesn't mean that I don't have my own brain and my own way of thinking. I'm looking at this as a scientist, I'm a professor, and I see problems. We need to define these problems, find solutions. And that means bringing everybody together to solve these solutions. And just I quick, hope to do. And quickly, what should people who are watching this, what should they do? How can they get involved to help influence this? Well, especially people who live in the smaller coastal cities, and that is Oceanside, Carlsbad, Encinitas, Solana Beach, especially Encinitas and Solana Beach, because Oceanside signed our letter the other day mm -hmm. asking for discussion. Carlsbad is still figuring out how to appoint their, their SANDAG board right. member. And you keep on going on down. But people in San Diego even, they want to get to our beaches. We want to get to San Diego, but we also want to get to Poway, to San Marcos. Right. It's a mesh and a network. So really everyone in the San Diego region can write a short little email to their favorite city council member and say, hey, yeah, let's start having this conversation. Terry, again, I respect the fact that you're sitting in here. I, I, your courage and to face tough questions, that's probably why you get elected is because uh, people respect you on both sides of the aisle. Yeah, well, 88 percent of the people in Del Mar who voted, voted for me by my math. <laughs> so that gives me a reason to get out here and, and really get the message out. I, and I appreciate you coming to KSI and you're always welcome. Thank you.